Okay, so here we go. This proof is a little bit longer because we're proving a theorem. We're proving that the congruent supplements theorem, where any two angles that are supplements, any two angles are supplementary to congruent angles. Now that's a lot of words there. So let's look. The first thing we're going to do, obviously, is state out the given. And the last thing that we're going to do, find it here, is fill in what they want us to find. So they're telling us that angle 1 and 2 are supplements, 3 and 4 are supplements, and 1 is congruent to 4. So there's a few different things that we know here, and we would start listing them as statements. We know that if 1 and 2 are supplements, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. We know the same thing for 3 and 4. And we know that if the measure, that if angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So I would list those three things out. You do not have to have ended up doing it in the same order. I don't want to do that. You do not have to end up doing it in the same order as they did. I would have listed the things that I know next. But they actually put angle 1 and 2 are 180, angle 3 and 4, or the measure of angle 3 and 4 180. And that is the definition of what supplementary means. Now from here, you could do two different things. You could actually put in that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. That would be the definition of congruent angles. Or you can say, well, if the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180, and the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is 180, they have to be equal to each other. So in this proof, they put that they were equal to each other, and that's the transitive property of equality. And they also put in that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4, which is the definition of congruent angles. As I said, at this point, you could have had these in different orders. You could have put number 4 up at number 2 and slid everything down. At this point, you need to be able to say that what supplementary means, what congruent means, and then from these, you would be able to get, from this step here, you would get this step. Next, in this case, they substituted the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 they substituted. At this point, I would have accepted if you had just done, you would have the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. And below it, you would have the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. I would have been okay if you just went to the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Because you've proven that this is all equal. You've proven that this is equal, and then that would be the subtraction property of equality. I hope you can read all that. That says equality. And that is the next step that they do. Measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 3. That's the subtraction property of equality. And what I do want you to be able to get at this point is that, that the measure of two angles is equal. They are congruent. And that's the definition of congruent. Let me just clean this up a little bit over here. So in my case, I probably would have done one, then I probably, I might have done step four, step two, step three. I probably would not have even shown step five because if I have step two and I have step three here, I've already shown step four, 
So then step six and step seven. So that's why when I tell you on your proof that it might be six to 10 steps um, right here, this was seven steps, I would have actually done it in six steps. Now that you've proved this theorem, in the future, could you just say the given, the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two are supplements, the measure of angle three and angle four are supplements, one is equal to four, prove this. This could have been a two-step proof where you say, well, since this is all true, the answer here is the congruent supplements theorem. We're, when we prove a theorem, we're doing all of this work to show that what we want to prove is true. In the future, we can just do congruent supplements theorem and cut out steps. That's another, again why I might say a proof is six to 10 steps. If you use this theorem, you're going to save a bunch of steps. But if you don't use the theorem, it's still okay. And in many of the ones we've been doing in class, we haven't necessarily been using these theorems. We've been defaulting to things we learned in, in chapter one like angle addition postulate, and that answer would still be okay. So I'm going to save this one, and then I'll do other proofs in other videos.